on my way to pick up vacuum tubes. Lots and lots of vacuum tubes. For TVs and radio resurrections and repairs. The sun is just starting to come up. Looks like it's 106.3 in the morning. Jesus is brutal. You just hope the car in front of you doesn't stop. This makes safety more safe. Because that's what it's all about now, being safe. We completely took the fun out of life and we made everything about safety. So I be safe. Me compliant. Bye bye Mr. Sun. Al contacted me, had a friend who died and his estate included a lot of tubes, a lot of vacuum tubes, so he invited me to come pick them up. And Al was such an amazing wealth of information. He really showed me how much I don't know. He's been a TV tech for a lot of years and an amazing memory, amazing knowledge. And I tried to capture as much of it as I could in this video. I wasn't really prepared to do a video. This video, there's a lot of just dead visual time it's more like a podcast, but if you're into vacuum tubes, if you're interested in vacuum tubes, you should really spend the time and watch this because uh, people with this kind of knowledge are getting more and more rare. And I was so lucky to meet Al and he didn't want to go on camera. I don't want to go on camera, but he was very generous with his knowledge and uh, I am that much better for it so not the greatest video but definitely a lot of information contained in this uh, that you'll never hear anywhere else so um, I'm gonna start uh, it's gonna be just kind of a mixed up video so just uh, get into it and I hope you learn something Okay, so Al here has an absolute wealth of information about tubes, and he actually can just recognize them. ID, ID the number by just looking at the, <laughs> the thing. So these have, these are by Western Electric, the 346B, and they're a Thyrotron. And as far as I know, they're mercury vapor, but they've got some uh, radioactive uh, element in them to cause them to fire easy. Uh, so that the the action will trigger easier because of the I think it's the neutrons that they give off and there's a couple of them in the box and they've got a base on them that's permanent but from what I understand a lot of thyrotrons are that way and uh, some of the voltage regulator tubes there's a couple ballast tubes in here too they got a fall real small filament You've run to, into some of the radios you've worked on. Right. Has had them. You know, I got a, they mined the Europium red rare, red rare earth ore for CRTs. Yep. Uh, at Mountain Pass, which is not far from me. And I got a piece of ore from there because I, I knew a geologist that worked there. Yep. And it turns out it's radioactive. Oh. It drives a Geiger counter nuts. So that, that I, I, I quickly know. move that out of the house. Out of the house. Yeah. So those I'll have to take a go. No doubt those are a little bit hot.
These ones here are cold. Nothing above background. But these ones here, they're hot. This one here seems to be cold, but you get anywhere near these up here. These, those are, those are hot, like he said. But yeah, if you want to talk, show, share some of your wisdom about some of these other. So what brand of tube do you think is the best? Is there Sylvania, one? Sylvania is one of my favorite. GE and RCA, uh, they all make good tubes. RCA's, you'll find that they'll have a short in them quicker than any, any of the three. But uh, they're still good tubes and their mission lasts real well. And you think over 2,000 hours? Over 2,000 if they're not, you know, if you have all good capacitors and biased right, they, they run for many, many hours. How about sweep tubes? Sweep tubes, same way, 6LQ6, six, six six, JE6. Because so many old, old TV shops talk about changing those, you know, biannually. Oh, that's that's silly. I wouldn't even think of that. This one is t like a 29KQ6, but they're real heavy built, and I don't know if you can see the cathode, but they're real wide, and they'll they'll carry a lot of current. And guys like to build uh, output transformerless tube amplifiers with some of these uh, Japanese or or uh, I think they're Japanese sets. They used a lot of them, like 29KQ6, 6KQ6, whatever, but uh, 6LF6 and the KG6, 6KG6, they like to, they like to use those for output tubes too, and they have to stack them, you know, like six in a row on each side of the push-pull just to, they use them like transistors and drive the speaker directly. That's With the hopes bad. that one tube doesn't short and blow the speaker to heck. <laughs> oh, yeah. 400 volts on a speaker doesn't go well. So, come on, share more of your wisdom yeah. here. You were going before I t started recording. Yeah. You are talking about the Japanese tubes and the, the yeah. envelopes with the... Okay, on, if I can find one here. At any rate, uh, on the Japanese tubes, like a lot of the Raytheons... Uh, if you look at them and they're white lettering and they have a, a little seam mark on the top of the tube right where the, the nipple is, where they sealed it off, uh, and the, the insides, like on a 6GH8, there won't be a silver element in them. They're, they're gray. They're, they're weak right off the get-go. Radio Shack used a bunch of them. Uh, and uh, a lot of their tubes are made in Korea also and they're they're weak right out of the box so uh, japanese tubes with the seam on the top right they look like they were put together in two pieces yep and then there's japanese tubes that'll have like a dag coating like 6gh8 or aw8 will have a like a dag coating on the inside of the tube and it's made in japan those are excellent tubes gh8 6gh8 is one of them from uh, Japan, and they are very good tubes. And what are they branded? The uh, Raytheon and whoever, whoever buys them, they just uh, I think they're made by Matashita. Who? Any tube that's made by Matashita is excellent tubes. And you were talking about your fondness for uh, uh, realistic lifetime tubes. Yeah. And how they're the, just, the just the junk uh, of the. So tell us about the gold pins. The gold How... pins is a fake. It's a, uh, it's copper is what it is. They sandblast the pins, and they look, they look gold. And I think it's just copper. Uh, but if you look on the bottom of the tube, you can see that it's been sandblasted. And they they take the cladding off the, the pins, and they turn copper colored, and they call them gold. So 33 GT7. What is that? That's horizontal output tube. And damper? Uh, I don't think so. 
Is that like a 33 GY7? GY7 has got the damper and the... And the uh, 17 DQ6, that's... That's just a, just a single horizontal output tube. 6D6, I believe, is an audio out from an old radio. And they might have a double section in that tube. One for the preamp, one for the... No, I'm wrong. Got me. 6D6 is an IF tube. But there is one, uh, maybe a B6, that has that. And they're kind of sought after because they're a triode, double triode. 6EM7, that's that makes for a good output tube substitute for 6BQ5. 6CW4 makes a good uh, substitute for 6BQ5 too. 6BQ6, geez, there's a few of those down there, isn't there? Yeah. You won't be short on horizontal output tubes for a while. photo photo tube so oh, it yeah. has a half a plate and then one center pin that comes up and the light from the projector shines in on this and of course the soundtrack is a varying uh, exposure on the film and it, the variances of light on this creates difference in voltage and there's your sound that's why the old movies always have a... Okay, I think you need to explain that, because when I think of photomultiplier, that's a photomultiplier no, tube? No, I don't... It's not a multiplier. This is just a photo tube. Okay, explain how where this would be used? This I, I... would be used in a projector. Okay. A projector. And as as the uh, film goes, and the soundtrack has, has uh, recording bars like this, and they... Well, I think it starts from the middle and goes out and gets bigger. And that, that part of the film uh, it has a light that shines through that and hits this tube which just has a rounded plate and then a center element and it changes either changes resistance or creates a little bit of voltage with the differences in brightness okay and that that's your sound and they just amplify it from there and uh, and that, that that actually carried voice yeah oh yeah it's recent. That's okay. I, I'm. That's I, I don't do projectors, so <laughs> I'm learning. Keep going, man. Oh, this man. is this is entertaining. No, that's. Westinghouse. I I thought, of course, you know, not knowing anything about projectors, I thought that they had a magnetic strip there, but that makes a lot of sense. I don't know even if the new ones do. So it's like light modulation. Yes. Exactly or or or. It. or light intensity modulation yep. okay I'm trying to find one of those radio shack tubes or one that's made like that okay let's open this realistic up and see what we've got here if it's the original tube in the box it is okay you see the white lettering the white lettering for the number of the tube, of course, realistic, and this will be the same as uh, it's there. Made. There are the seams. Yeah, you can see the seams in the glass, and you can feel them with your finger. Okay. And of course, uh, British tubes and so on have the seams too, but they're, that's a different cat. This is made in Japan, and then the pins are not gold, as they say. They're just sandblasted, and you can see, you can feel it even. The glass is all roughed up from sandblasting. I see that. It's like frosted looking. Yeah, they just sandblast the cladding off the tube, and then they call it gold. <laughs> These are not good tubes. If they're made in Japan with the white lettering and uh, has the seams, they're not, a, they're not a quality tube at all. Bottom of the barrel. I think so. Yeah, I just know every time I find those, they're problematic. Yep. What 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 is that one? What six JH six? Is that a sound that's IF tube for color TV? Right. RCA. Is that the one that's in the sound? Like uh, the uh, the. No, I think it's in the third, second IF. Because I've had those in the sound demod, and the thing just buzzed be. like crazy. Yep. Six HZ six is in the, a lot of the RCAs for sound demod. 
6 dt6 is another sound demod tube these might be in the if for the sound ew6 is in the sound a lot of rcas so what else can we find here let's see here i'm gonna pause go okay uh o ob3 is a voltage regulator tube and they glow if you want something cheap that's fun but you can make night lights out of them and different voltage of tubes will glow different colors i believe the oa3 is a neon it'll glow orange red like the little neon bulbs this is an ob3 but uh they go from uh red to i think the higher voltages are argon gas or something like that and they glow blue so a ne neon lamp by default is kind of a regulator. Yeah, it is. It's, it's about 75, 80 volts, something like that. Right. When it fires, you're you're not going to push it much further than that. And then, of course, these kind of tubes are very cheap to get. Uh, these are Thyrotrons. OA4. Oops. And again, they might be radioactive. They have the center element and then the plate. And there's a little trigger wire that comes up and they send a pulse on that wire and the tube will conduct from that center wire down to the plate. And it's, I think they've got mercury in them. And they're like a relay. And they'll, bigger ones will pull a lot of current up in the amps. You know, you have some of them I think you can get 20 amps or... 30 amp pulse through them but uh, a lot of them have radioactive material in them so they'll fire when they send the pulse i wonder if it i wonder what the life of it is i, I wonder don't know. If, wonder if the radium was my, was uh, mentioned let's see So the Raytheon, Raytheon tubes, the newer ones are garbage. Right. They're, they're the crappy Japanese ones? Yep. Okay. Or Korean. And uh, I think the Chinese make better tubes. But uh, the old Raytheon company made good tubes. What do you think about Soviet tubes? Soviet tubes? I haven't had any trouble with them. Uh, it'd be nice if the 6L6s were the same size plate as, as the American. But nobody's going to beat the... Sylvania 6L6. I know people like the black plate RCAs, but the Sylvania, some of them have a double uh, heat sink on the, on the plate, and you can't beat those. I think they're 6L6 GTB, if I'm right. Yeah, you can't beat them for guitar amps and such. Very hard to come by. Go ahead. Got 6KG6 is a horizontal output tube, and they're also used for people building a, a output transformer less amplifiers because they have a real large cathode, and they're they can be they can pull lots of current for a relatively low voltage, and they stack them in parallel like six tubes on each side of a push-pull circuit and you can drive an 8 ohm speaker direct you drive an 8 ohm speaker direct yep but heaven help you if one of these tube shorts your speakers are gone with 400 volts on them <laughs> that's the only bad thing but what kind of watts what kind of watt i don't think they get a great deal i think it may be in the 15 20 watt range if, at best 42 EEC4. This will show you the quality of some of these Japanese tubes on this Sylvania. Wow, look at that thing. Yeah, no, that's, that's a, a damper tube. It's just a diode. Right. It's a high voltage diode. If you want some high powered rectifiers for an amplifier, damper tubes really work great for it and are good for show. If you like show, some people like to have a lot of tubes and that's a good japanese tube right this it one here is made in the united states okay some of them are made in japan and they are really good tubes. sylvania like to make their own let me 
see if we can find the jap on here. This one might be. It's wrapped up. Yeah. Nope, same thing. So yeah, basically, so that the the Panasonic, yeah, Matshusta or Mat yeah, whatever it is, or Matshusta, are good tubes. They're excellent tubes. None. Did Toshiba make tubes? They did. I've seen those branded Toshiba in sets yeah, before. Yeah, they're not bad. Try it again. Go. Let's see if. 6GB5 might be made in Japan. It is. It's either British or Japan. They'll have an identifying band around the bottom. And a lot of times... And the, the band is Japan, right? Yeah. And a lot of times they'll have uh, the seams. But this one's made in Great Britain. And they're very good tubes. Even if they have the seams, they're good tubes? Yep. Yep. So where does the this thing with the seams apply? <laughs> Just in the Japanese made ones with the seams and the white lettering. Okay. It just, you kind of got to know the, the look. Uh, this one's made in Great Britain. So these are excellent tubes. Is that the yeah. one you said would melt down before the, it does? They'll melt, they'll melt the glass. They'll pull, the plate will get red and they'll it'll keep going until it sucks the middle of the tube in and lets air into it I've they just don't give up what is that what is that the number yeah 6 GB 5 29 KQ 6 is kind of what I'm looking for but how interchangeable do you think these things are? Do, have you seen the video where I I made the adapter to go from a yeah. from a six six uh, BQ is it six BQ five or six BQ six six BQ five I think you went to six BQ six or GQ6. no I went I went from a six BQ five to a six LQ six. Yep. Uh, what do you think about the compatibility I of? I think they I think they work. If as long as the gain is there to, you know, enough drive to drive it. 29 LE6 or 29 KQ6 is another one, the same situation. Uh, made in Great Britain. This one's made in Japan. That one has white lettering too. Yep, but it's an excellent tube. It's It's got the seams. Right. And it's got this band. Then on horizontal output tubes, some of the Japanese horizontal output tubes, like uh, 31 JS6 or 6 JS6, will have a green band around them, and made in Japan, and I, they're moderately good. Not, How about the IEC 38 HE7s that have the green band around them? I think they're 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 all right. They're not as good as some of the other ones, but. IEC, I think they were lower priced. And Zenith, Zenith didn't make tubes. They sourced them from... They did. They did? They did. If you look... Oh, that's another thing I need to go with through with you. You can identify who makes tubes by looking at them. Now, if they're made in a different country, it won't... It won't follow. This one's made in England. It's another excellent tube. Let me get one that's made by RCA or Sylvania or Zenith. Let's try Zenith. This will be a GE or a Sylvania tube. Okay. See if you look at the lettering, you got to look close. It's on with ink and it's kind of a gray silver color. And this isn't a real good example of it, but this is a Sylvania tube. By, you can tell by the color of the ink they used. Right, because Sylvania uses that ink. Yes, that, they like, do. That wipes off. It does. It stays pretty good. This and G GE, good. like laser engraved yes, them. Yes, they do. GE, you can always tell a GE tube because it's etched into the glass. RCA always has a box around their number. Let's see if this is the actual... No, 
Yeah, it is. There. Yeah. That's an RCA. You, you cannot see this in this camera, but you're just going to have to get, get the light right there. We'll yeah, go. there's the box around it. Yep. And that'll be a true RCA tube. So even if and it's they a... don't etch the glass, and you'll find RCA tubes that have the etched glass, and you know who made it, GE. Same way with Sylvania. Whoever whoever was running a certain number of tubes, they other companies would buy buy from that company. They all kind of got together, and they'd buy from each other. Now this is a GE, and you can let me look in your camera here. Yeah, you can rub your finger over it's it and feel it. It's real rough. Yeah. It'll dig right into your fingernail. And it's etched. Right. It never, never rubs off, of course. Right. And that's true GE tube. So, yeah, we should find a Zenith and try and identify it. So, Zenith was buying them from different... They bought them from whoever. Now, Zenith picture tubes were all made by Roland. Right. They owned their own company, I think. Roland was subsidiary of Zenith and they even invented that here's a good that same one we had 6JW8 so that's a Sylvania that's a Sylvania okay yeah that we might have already had now the okay 6AQ5 here and if I get it just right. Yeah, you can reflection. see you can see the box around it. Yep, that's true RCA. Why are some of them have like black paint on the inside of the glass? Like I that? don't really know why they do that. Some of it's shielding. But uh, it's not the tube is not bad just because no, it's black. It certainly is. A lot of people would see that and they would think that. I'll try this on the fly here. So there's an, if this is the original tube, it's. Nope. Now this one is the other brand of Japanese tube. This is the one Magnavox is buying. It is painted. It has the box around it. Yeah, but it looks different yes, than the it RCA. Does. It's, it's a Japanese made tube. And this is it's a almost good. a reddish color. Yeah. And it is a good tube. This is the other That one does not have the the seams. Okay. And these are excellent tubes. There's nothing wrong with them. No. This is a 6CL6 in Raytheon, and it's a real good example of GE. You can see the etching yes. on the glass real well. 6CL6 makes a good audio output tube. Low. That's a vertical out, right? Uh, video a lot of times. Video? Yeah, they're not real high powered, but it's good for probably five watts, six, seven watts push pull. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. Yeah, uh -huh. these these people, you're running. Yeah, yeah. These people buy tubes from anywhere they can buy them. So this is like grade F right here. Yeah. And I really can't tell you who made that one. Service master, <laughs> <laughs> and it may be a good tube. It looks like a Western Western Electric made the 403s, 403Bs. So it looks like a good tube, but I don't, I don't know who those made it. are. The the writing always rubs off on those. Yes, it does. It does on the Western Electric too. Western Electric always made good tubes. GE 6JK5. That's a good example of GE buying from Sylvania. Sylvania. Yep, Sylvania tube with a GE logo. Because it's not etched in. Yep. It's got the silver ink. So we're only talking there are maybe three to five manufacturers of tubes. Right. We're talking Sylvania GE RCA and then two Japanese companies and we didn't talk about the European stuff. Yeah, though. we didn't. 
I don't oh. know. This almost looks like GE. Yep, it is. It's etched in. Yep, it's etched in with with a box around it. I thought so, but it doesn't. It just says USA on the bottom. It's hard to get the reflection right. There it is. Okay. GE5, 6GE5. That's Westinghouse. <laughs> Let's see if this, I don't know who made this 6S and Sorry about the focus going all over the place. Yeah, I'm, you can't. I'm, I'm live on the fly here. Yeah, I'm trying to focus on um, hard to read lettering. Okay, so we, It's okay. anybody's guess who made that one. It's, it's not the RCA logo by having the square box around it. This one's round, so. I don't know who made that one. No name on it. That has to be one of the most common tubes in old black and whites. Yes, it is. Someone told me that those perform better in 12AX7s. They're, they, they work just as well, except this uh, 6SN7 is, I think, 70 gain or even lower. I think the 12AT or the 6SL7 is 70 gain. The 6SN7 is lower than that. The 12AX7 is 100 gain. And that's why everybody likes them because they're 100 mu or 100 gain tube. Motorola, I wonder who they were using. Motorola got the box around it it's a more of an octagon type yeah. thing or something that would probably be RCA and with the black plate it looks like an RCA I wonder if anybody was brand loyal like oh I only use <laughs> GE tubes in my set or I only use you know you get people like that yeah and they didn't, Zenith was pretty loyal to GE and, there's another thing here, GE and uh, Sylvania, Zenith used a lot of. One thing I was told, and I don't know if it's true, is the red label Sylvania is a lower grade tube than the black label Sylvania, such as this. It has a black label. And it could be just warranty. One will be have a longer warranty than the other, but I was told the red label wasn't as wasn't as good a tube. But I haven't had trouble with either what one. What would the warranty matter though? Because you throw the box away when yeah. you put the tube in. Yeah, maybe it would just at the at the supply house. I don't know, but I did hear a quality. And I suppose that that the tube will have the red label on it. Oh, the tube will be red too. You bet. No, we got an off brand. Yeah, it's off brand, but it's got the, if I can get it right in the light, it's made by Sylvania. It is a pinkish color, isn't it? Yep. It's made by Sylvania, but it's, you know, it's, it says Sylvania, I guess. You really got to look close because it's all wore off. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. 11 MS8. Okay. In Zenith, of course. This one is made in Japan. It is. But it's an excellent tube. It does have the pinch welds. Okay. And it's only got, well, it's got three, four pinch welds. You can, it's all four sides like this. It, by the look of the tube, I know it's not that cheap company that's lousy. This is a good tube. It's that's a, a vertical output. That's got the triode and yeah, the... Yeah, the triode and the pentode. And you can tell, I guess you can tell by the lettering, really. It just has a different look. 
than those cheap ones I do. think all the Packard Bells used, that was a Panasonic. Yeah, and it could be very well a Mattachita tube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I call this the, the bowel movement <laughs> tube. There we go. 11 BM8, but there was a 6... The 6 BMA, right, too, that's that's used in a lot of the high fire receivers. Yes. Now, there's no markings on it. It's all wore off. But if you look real close, it's RCA. It's got the box around it. I see that. Or, you, or it is that Japanese. You, you won't see that in the camera, but I can see that here. Yeah, or it can be that Japanese company. But since it doesn't have the seams on it, it's probably RCA. And the Japanese, if you can look at the filament that's down inside the white strands, they're just single wires. RCA uses single wires. The Japanese will use coiled. Yes. Coiled filament. Coil with a, like a, a white coating. White coating on it okay. for, the, for the insulation. Yeah. And of course, uh, it's far as I'm concerned that's a better filament the, the coil? coiled ones yeah spiral wound they call it or something like that this is a G yeah that's a dual yes it is it's a triode and a pentode I think they're good for about eight watts or more push-pull that's a GE it says it's G a GE but again it has exactly the same box around it so it's RCA made. It's RCA made, the same filaments. Hmm. So brand loyalty was bogus. Yes, very much so. This won't be RCA if it's the right tube. Maybe. No. Where's the RC logo? Shoot. At any rate, that one's made by GE. It's got the etching on the glass. Yes, it does. So the numbers have some significance too. The... Yeah, I believe I believe certain numbers of tubes are only made by one company. But I mean the of course. There's everyone everyone watching this should know this. The first number is generally the filament. Right. And then the last number is the number of elements. Right. And how would you define number of elements? <laughs> I think it's numbers of grids and the plate. Cathode, grids and plate. Maybe it's just the grids and plate. 25C of 6, CBS. We should see who made yeah, that. Let's see who made those. If we can get them out. Yeah. It looks like an RCA, but it's got the round logo around the the 25, what is it, CU6? It is, it's a circle, yes. Yep. So I don't know. Sure looks like RCA though. So nobody re-stamped them, huh? No. Um, they they put their own name on them, but they didn't re-stamp the, the the number of the tube. CBS again. That one. GE. It's GE. There goes his phone. Probably get a copyright infringement for the ringtone. <laughs> we haven't looked at the sides yet. See what the brand name of it says Sylvania, but it's got a box around it. So it could be RCA, more than likely. Is that a 5U4? Yeah. Looks like it. Or 5. 5AW4, it looks like. So there's several of those that 
all look the same and all have the same pin out but all have kind of different specs and they're interchangeable to a point and I think you've seen me run into that in videos uh, there was a smaller version of the 5U4 that was used in radios right 5 Y3 but a 5U4 will drop right in yep but sure then is. you end up with a higher B plus yep and there's I think 26 LW6 I don't think I've ever seen one in, other than Sylvania. It's a horizontal output tube. And I think I think maybe Sylvania probably designed it and then sold to everybody. If you look at this tube, it has heat sinks on the on the plate. You have your main plate. The right. Reflections are Yeah, it's tough. You have your main plate. Yeah. And then right on the edge They've got a, a secondary, boy, that reflection is really, there it is, right there, you can see it. Right. And that's to radiate there, yep, heat. Yep, radiate heat. And if you find Sylvania, Sylvania's the only one that had it on 6L6s. So what is the significance of black plate? You see that a lot. Is that I just more? Know. I think it's more... Uh, I don't think there's much difference in it myself. It might radiate more heat, but as far as sound goes, there we have a Raytheon. Because these are like gray plate. Right. And that's the way, it's the G. GE. It's etched in like laser or acid etched in the glass. Now, if... Uh, if anybody else knows, on these GE tubes, some of them have little dots below the numbers. And I've been told that that could be a different brand than GE, possibly Roland. I'm not sure on that. But a lot of the etched-in glass, which is normally GE, some of them have dots underneath. And if it's a different brand, it'd be interesting to know that. It could be Roland, I'm not sure. That's a good so that that's a good tube for Raytheon. GE again. Etched in, yes. Etched in. Which is really nice. You can rub, rub and clean them off. And <laughs> so it does. Does it really even matter though if the life expectancy of all of them is about the same? All the brands is is one brand going to last longer than another brand? I I think uh, some of them do. GE and and Sylvania I think are some of your longer lived tubes, and definitely some of the the Japanese ones of the good or the British ones. In those horizontal output tubes. You don't think that's a function of the way they drive them in the set? If everything's working right, yeah. The, the, maybe the circuit's more efficient. These 29 LQ6, or LE6s or LQ6s, been here before, but they'll get uh, black painted marks on the glass yes. from, from use. Instead of a of, yes. Of uh, where the the gas or the electrons are escaping out of the plate, and they hit the glass, and they form a dark area. Yes. But the Japanese ones and the British ones form a almost a black paint yes. on the inside. The Russian ones do that. Yeah, too. they do. They do. And I, I don't know what the difference is. That's or, like the the cathode boil off. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Or the plate, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which, but it's normal. But it kind of gives you an idea how many hours are on the tube. Right. It's kind of like the purpose of halogen gas, right? Yeah, that's right for the, for light bulbs. The purpose of halogen gas, the purpose of a halogen light bulb. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it redeposits 
the evaporated tungsten back onto the filament. You're right on that. So that's why a, a standard incandescent bulb, the glass will get dark as the filament boils off. Yeah, and then, then the halogen bulb, that darkness is put back onto the filament. It, it, it redeposited it, yep. as crystals. Yep. So you look at the filament on a high hour halogen bulb, it's got a lot of little... Yeah, the, the filament just glistens. Right, like it, a lot of little beads. Yep, it's crystallized or whatever. Hey, what else can we learn here? Keep teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run this memory card out here. <laughs> I think it's a 512 and you could probably fill it up. We've already covered the zero O tubes, the OZ4 and the... 12 AV5, what is that? 12 AV5, where did you find that at? Oh, here? Yeah. That's a... I don't even think it has a cap, if I'm right. I think it's a... Horizontal output horizontal tube, output tube or for Sears Silvertone. Yeah, I think you can use them for uh, audio output too. 12 AV5? Yes. As long as they aren't sharp cut off, they work good for audio. There's a lot of tubes can be used for audio outputs instead of the, the mainstay that everybody's been using. Are, are there any sharp cut off horizontal output tubes? I think a lot of them are. If I'm right, I tried to make an amplifier with uh, six MJ6s, and I, you couldn't bias it. It was so close, it'd either be on or off, and it was distorted at low volume. Worked great at high volume, but... Got it, okay. You can never get it clean. Got it. Well, I saw there's a schematics online of people making audio amps with a 33GY7 or 38HK or HE7. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I think they get around that by driving the screen grid and then just setting the bias with the first grid and they drive the screen grid which takes another tube and a little extra circuitry. Oh, to get around the cutoff. Yeah, to get around the cutoff. Yep. 2X2, I was told, as the airplane goes by, just for Shango, was used in the government for radar for the high voltage supply in the radar tubes yeah, it, looks, it looks like a high voltage yep. rectifier it flyback is. rectifier it's only four pin try to plug that in <laughs> but it is it's a high voltage rectifier it's got a getter too a lot of those don't now, they, uh, if you look they put it clear down at the bottom around the pins uh -huh. they have a getter but you gotta look for it this one they actually have on the side. Uh, we could right. old. There you go. Probably could use them instead of the one B three. Yeah, possibly get away with it. So where is the getter on this one? Down at it's the bottom. It's clear at the bottom. If you look. You can see the you little... You can see it. It's a ring. Right. Yep. And I think they develop... You're having a lot of them dead from sitting. Yeah. I think they probably get a leak in the... Around the very top. The wires going through the bottom are the same as any other tube. Right, right. So, and they're not having well, any the trouble. Well, the formulation of the leads that penetrate the glass on the bottom forms a hermetic seal. Right. It's a... The only variable in having those 1B3s go bad so often, maybe, is the... and the, Well, that doesn't look like that same type of metal. That, the tungsten, yes. whatever, that the glass will bond to. It is, isn't it? That goes, almost looks like it's got glue, if you look at it. It looks like it's got some sealant. Yeah, and it goes all the way into the tube, same kind of metal. Well, I mean, going forward long term, you can always kind of replace those with solid state. And there's one uh, in here somewhere. And we, we was talking to a friend about two uh, two microwave oven diodes in series, <laughs> two silicon microwave oven diodes in series. 
and you probably have to use a resistor because the voltage would go up so high. 2X2. 3CZ3, that's going to be a color TV tube. Is this a Zenith one with the small pins? No. no. It's like a like a 3A3. And who's it Ma made by? Made by <laughs> Sylvania. True Sylvania. Yep. The gray. Kind of a goldish gray paint. And it doesn't rub off. It's pretty it's pretty stout. You can scrape on it and it stays pretty good. The yellow paint will come off, but Okay, so horizontal output tubes. As far as goes uh, for uh, RCA, whatever uses 6JE6 or 6LQ6, the 6MJ6 is the cream of the crop. Direct drop in. Yep, replacement. The top of it isn't metal like this. It's it's a black tube, black top like a like that two like A two. Yeah, like that one B three or right two A. Yep, and they're they're uh, the best horizontal output tube you can get. Treat now, them, treat them like gold, cause they are gold. <laughs> now, how about between the six six LB six six JS six? Those are the same, right? LB six. I don't think so. L LB six, I believe, is a bigger tube. Let's see if I'm wrong. Yeah. But I think that drops right into a 6JS6. Yeah, that's been hot. Yeah. That's another thing they need to look for is right, they, any tube that's got the getter is getting red. It's been very hot. That's not just from age, huh? No. They don't shrink from age? They do. But this one, you can tell, is not an old tube. And that one's been red plated. And it's been red plated. It may be good. But <laughs> if you're paying big bucks for a tube, you got to look at them. That one looks brand new. Yep, 6LB6. Looks brand new. I don't know if it's been used or not. It's got a little bit of a ring around it. Just a little bit of color. Hard to tell. Another way of looking is I'll look down on the mica between the right where it meets the plate and if it's got some dark dark uh, coloring on the mica you can tell they've been used too. And this one doesn't show that. What is this one? LB6. And again it's been hot. in the original box and the original tube but there's rings in that getter I think that tube's been hot real hot it's even brown right in here can you see that at all? yeah well you really got to look now whether that tube is bad or yeah not. the mic on the top is kind of brown see it yeah I do yeah yep Whether it's bad or not, that's the next thing, but... Man, that's a Zenith tube. There we go with the dots. It's showing that it's a GE. But, it's got dots below it. Now, I don't know if that's GE or if it's Roland or another company. The slugging. There's a little bit of rainbow around the getter, just right on the edge, and you really got to look for it. I see that. I'm in my eyes. It's in the right, right angle. You're not. Yeah, I know. It's. I got it here. Okay. And you think that's used? It huh? could be used for a while. And I think there's a little bit of darkness on the mica, but right underneath the plate, right in the gap there. If you look, I got it the right angle for you. Yeah. 
It might be used. It looks new if you just grab it. And then if you look at the pins, see how they've got dents right in the middle of the pin? Right. That's from tube socket. That tube's been plugged and used. Nineteen date code, 1970. One, uh, first month, third day probably, if I'm right. Well, that's... And then, th another th thing is this EIA number, and you've mentioned that in your video. Oh, yeah. 273 yeah. and OCA. Yep. And right. And then 188 is GE. 337 was Westinghouse. And that's in your SAM's substitute, or your SAM's uh, folder manual, the what? first, your, your uh, lookup book. Really? Yeah, the EIA numbers are all listed there. Look for it, it's in there. In every SAM's? In just the... The, the, the but they're, they put out one every year. Yeah, it's in there. Really? Yep, I've seen it. That's where I always used to go for it. Magnavox had their own number, I can't remember what it was. Sylvania's 312. Six of the well-known tube oh boy that Down one's that seven. one's been on fire hasn't it it's been hot it may work fine but it's been hot another thing to look for <laughs> wow that thing is grilled uh, it's really been toasted is this one has double tubes in it if you look close there's two in parallel yep they're yeah. in parallel 42 KN6. That was a yep. Sylvania tube. Yep. It's and they Sylvania. Did that all the time. Yep. And I can't help but think that makes a better tube, but. Yeah, that one's really been warm. It'd be interesting if that worked. Here it's going. 6BL7 was a double triode. Kind of like a 6SN7, but much heavier. And I think they like to use them, use them for headphone amplifiers, tube type he headphone amps. But you can get several watts out of them, triode. So drive the headphones direct or through I a transformer? Think they've done both. They've done both. And again, that's RCA. It's got the ring around it. Yeah. And it's been warm. You can see the colors in the rainbow in the getter before it gets to the dark part. The getter used to come all the way down. But you see a lot of tubes like that that are still good. As a TV yeah. deflection, old black and white probably. Yeah, it is. Go ahead. 7868 is a very hard tube to find, and I looked at it, and it's used. But it looks good. And what is this? I mean, what kind of, what is this? This is industrial tube. Yeah, but they used them in audio amplifiers. Hammond used them in their amplifiers. Okay. You know, they were, they were a good, good tube. 7868. So what's the what's the purpose of having industrial tubes? Are they a better quality or I think they are. Uh, Probably closer to spec matching and so on. I'm not sure quite what the what what the benefit of it is. I know some of them have extra mica for harmonics and I know like 7025 is a 12AX7 and it's got double mica in it so it holds the elements from vibrating. These are, this is a OC3. And if I remember that's, let's see, there's, there's 75, 90 volt. I think this would be 125 volt or it's a regulator tube and it'll light up a certain color. 
blue, red, purple. Yeah. And the way these are connected is they're just connected from B plus to ground. Right, through a resistor. Just like you would a zener diode. But they're not good for a lot of current. I mean, you can't. You can get uh, maybe up to 30 milliamps through them, but they're, you're going to be pushing it at that. Like they bought from each other like 50L6. Yeah. Yeah. There that's it is. a GE. Yeah. And, and that's has, got the dots. So it's probably GE. But like I said, if anybody knows different, it'd be interesting to know. But that's and 50L6 does not is not the same <laughs> wattage capacity as a 6L6. Not even close. Too bad it isn't. Where, yeah, which is a little bit strange because even even a 12 L6, they're all the same after they get away from the 6 L6, 12 L6, 25 L6, and 50 L6. They're only good for two or three watts, five watts if you build a push pull amp. But they're going to sound as good as any other tube. You don't need a lot of power. And they're low priced. Playing <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you got it on. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I can tell if it's Sylvania or not just by the painting on the tube box. Uh, if you look, it's the same ink and the same density of ink. I could get stung here because I haven't looked, but we'll look. yeah, the font is the same. Uh -huh. It came out of the same printer. I would say that it's a Sylvania tube. So that's here we go. It says RCA from what's left of it, right? And I can tell by the looks of it that it's a Sylvania tube. Yep, we got the gray text. Yep, gray gold text. Wow. So RCA was. Sylvania was actually running RCA branded boxes in their factory. Yep. yep. They bought for whoever from whoever was making a certain number of tube at that time. This one's probably going to be a Sylvania tube if it's original. And if you don't hear noise on the ground. Yep. yep. Sylvania. Gray font. Big font. That's Sylvania. See now, here we go. There's an example. You can almost go down the aisle and look at the tubes. You know by the font that this one's not going to be a Sylvania tube. More than likely. And it's probably RCA. Yep. Looks like it. No, by God, got me. GE. Hmm. Yep. Etched in. Etched in. Got me. What's that, a 33GY7? Yeah, it looks like it. 12HE7. Well, it'd be a 35HE7, or what is the one that you use a lot of? 37HE7 or 38HE7? 38HE7, yeah. Same thing. Lower filament. Do you have a negative opinion of the portacolor? <laughs> I do. What's that? Just a. Uh, I did not like the picture on it. It was the first inline type picture tube with the stripes striped phosphor and i could tell that the delta was always the sharpest tube you could the, get the 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 um, vintage tv to talk about the portacolor is like watching uh watching tv through screen wire yeah yeah the, the pitch of the phosphor was quite large it was, i think it was the first inline tube 
Yes. Okay, let's have the opinion on the RCA Colorama. They always te seem to test very weak, yeah. but they're not dim. Right. And if you look, if you compare a, a Colorama tube to an original tube, you can tell just by the filaments. RCA had what they called uh, a cold filament. It, it lit up at a much lower temperature than what the other filaments and other pitch tubes did. And they just glow a real dark red. But the Colorama tube on their on their new gun, they were they were real bright and they just burned up. They just did not like A lot of the newer CRTs had very dull filaments. Yeah, those are better too. Very dull. They weren't glowing bright white lighting up yep. the wall behind the TV. But Colorama did. Yep. And they did not last. And, uh, okay, yeah, 23 EGP-22. That was made by, that's a first uh, rectangular tube picture tube, color. Okay. And it was made by National Video. It's their own invention of tube. All right. And they were actually using, uh, Scotty from Hawkeye told me they were using black and white bells. The bell glass was black and white on those tubes. And, of course, they put the, the colored screen on the front. Is that why the high-voltage thing is on the side rather than the top? Yep. yep. Okay, that makes sense. And they had a habit of blowing up in his ovens. <laughs> 23 EGP-22. Go ahead. What's okay. your thoughts on it? Uh, 23 EGP-22 uh, picture tube was the first rectangular screen tube uh, put out. And it was made by... Uh, um, what was it? What did I say? That you used National Video. Yeah, National Video. And uh, it was Scotty at Hawkeye Pitch Tube told me that bell, the glass, the main part of it, was a black and white bell that they bonded with the color screen on the front. And he hated to rebuild them because they'd blow up in his ovens quite often. But uh, they actually weren't too bad of a tube problem some but if you turn the high voltage up on the TV and you wrap on the neck gently if you can get them to snap an arc they'll, they'll come back to life it's like there's a Beltron cleans it off right that just by turning up the high voltage and getting it to arc and snap a few times they'll come back to life pretty good where a lot of tubes won't and you found the Beltron really cleaned that one up real So well. you mean just turn the high voltage wide open on the wide TV open. and where will it arc? In the gun. In the gun. It shouldn't though. It does. <laughs> it just does. Especially on those EGP-22s. On um, Hitachi picture tubes are one of the best picture tubes you can get for longevity. Uh, if, you, uh, if you do find a weak one, you can raise the filament up just a little bit, gently tap on the neck, and uh, back down, they'll usually come back. They're very good tubes. They used, uh, most of the big screens used Hitachi, and uh, those tubes lasted forever. You're talking about the projection? The projection sets. They were almost all of them Hitachi yeah, tubes. Those are extinct. Yep, I don't think there's are. anybody that wants those. Or If you worked on a black and white, that was a Hitachi TV, actually came from Japan I think oh yes and that one I think the picture tube came up on it and it looked yeah it had a real bright picture but it started out dim I think I was running it on 120 volts when mm. I should have been running it on 100 yeah. so that helped all yeah, the way helps. all the way around <laughs> I got another one of those there will be a video on soon that uh, somebody sent me then there's a uh, a lot of portable TVs like Magnavox and so on had Hitachi picture tubes in them and they're still good to this day they're very good picture tubes your name is Al and you will remain anonymous but you're a wealth of information and you make me feel insignificant <laughs> and stupid which is okay because I love to learn and I can figure stuff out right right and so I want you to introduce yourself while we look at these poise pads here. Okay. <laughs> I wonder what's in the box. Uh, 
No, I started out in a TV shop uh, when I was in eighth grade in 1968. And I worked till 1971 at that shop. And uh, he taught me the basics. I, I had all the electronic knowledge. In eighth grade? In eighth grade. Because I'd been building amps and whatever since I was a little kid. So I had my basic knowledge. But uh, I started at uh, Blevins Magnavox in Marshalltown in 71. I worked for him until he retired, bought him out in 91. I had my own shop from 91 until about 2017 and closed out. But that's a long time and a lot of changes in TV. So, How many people at your shop? One, me. <laughs> so, how was it? How was it a good living or what? No, it's TV repairs. Never been a real good, not a high-paying job, but it pays the bills. And if uh, if we had we got the bills paid and you had a little extra money to spend on eBay toys or whatever you you needed or wanted, then that was a good month. But you had to always save for the next month. It might be. You you didn't didn't make enough to pay all the bills. So, what was your peak year, peak profit year? Uh, in Iowa, you got to take that for account. Fifty five thousand. What year? Uh, that had been about ninety five, when all the VCRs were hitting and you were repairing VCRs as fast as you could go. I remember being at the shop till oh three a.m. in the morning, repairing VCRs and. Then go for breakfast after that and home to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Get up and do it all over again. Amazing. When was the last time you think a, a customer brought a tube set in for repair? What year? Oh, boy. That's been quite a while. You didn't do service calls, huh, home? Yes, I did. Service calls, big screen TV calls. And I was the only one in town that would touch a big screen. And had to get into replacing the fluid in the top of the picture tubes on the projection big screens. That was always quite the job. And those package ICs that drove the convergence? Yes. Yep. Yeah. STKs. Yeah. Yep. Found yeah. certain... I found a different number that would last. Instead of opening like those did, they were they become intermittent and open up. You find uh, there was another 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 number of STK you could buy that uh, would last forever. And of course now China's just flooded the market with counterfeit STKs, right? Yes, they have, and you got to watch out for them. So you can't even really, if it's a customer set, you cannot. Mostly audio, audio yeah. amps. You cannot use an STK. You, you just think you're buying a 35 watt chip and you're getting the lowest version of it, which might only be a 15 watt chip, and they remark it. You get away with it for a while until the customer turns it up. And Heinz and Kaufman, Gamatron. It says Gamatron. Some of those, I think, are worth some money. We haven't looked at it yet. Oh, I don't know. It's a Thyrotron. I can tell by the top. So is this radioactive? Yes, it could be. <laughs> 6012. Now, what are these? They're a switch, uh, like a relay. Okay. And they're mercury vapor. Oops. Yeah, I knew we'd get in on him. Uh... But at any rate, they're, uh, they aren't used for much anymore, but right. they're like a relay, and they'll, they're gas-filled, mercury vapor, and they're just triggered, and they'll fire, and I think they used to use them in welders and stuff, as far as I know, but that's a brand new one.
Yeah, it does sound kind of boomy, doesn't it? It does sound kind of boomy. Turn this guy down, but look at this. One of these with an eye tube that actually works. Yeah, and you can, when you tune it. Right. Let's see here. Give me a little, oh, maybe I'm not turning it, there it is. When it closes is when you hit the, the peak of the signal strength. And when it's open, you're off channel. This is a radio station that plays house music. This is almost worth moving to this place for. <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? It's true I like house. So I can actually... It's kind of brain dead enough and enjoyable enough to be tolerable. You could say this music sounds like a basketball in a squirrel cage blower. We don't want to say that though, do we? On eBay. Loaded up what, about half? No. Three quarters of them. So this is the shop of a, uh, say, ham radio operator. Or yeah, he used to do TV repair, and then he got into repairing a uh, <laughs> mirror, mirror mounts. Uh, yeah, he worked for Antique Electronic Supply for a while, and then started selling tubes for about 30 years. These were all empties. I want to build a little workshop like this. Yeah, I have plenty of room to do it. I just need to do it. I have all the wood too. It's just about getting time to do it. Didn't do any transistor stuff, huh? This is what happens when you've been driving for like 20 hours. You start, you start cranking the Mary Jane girls on FM off some really weak college radio station. You are now in the soft zone on 88.1 FM stereo. K-Soft.